Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 3, Lesson 9, The Nervous System and the Brain, Part 2. We're first going to go over the vocabulary that you will be hearing in today's reading. Our first word is brainstem, which is the central trunk of the human brain that continues down to the spinal cord. Our second word is hemispheres, halves of a sphere, halves of earth, or halves of the cerebrum. Our next word is cerebrum, the dominant part of the human brain found in the front of the skull that has two sections and is responsible for regulating most thought processes and voluntary actions in the human body. Our next word is cerebellum, the part of the human brain that is found at the bottom and back of the skull and that helps control muscle activity. Our next word is accurate, careful, free of mistakes or errors. Our next word is paralyzed, which means unable to act, move, or feel a part or parts of the body. Our next word is hollow, which means empty inside. Concussion is a brain injury. Medulla is the brain stem. And our last word, cerebral cortex, which is the gray matter of the cerebrum that processes sensory information and controls muscle function. We are now going to move into today's reading, which is in your small reader. Chapter 6, The Spinal Cord and Brain You've got a lot of nerves. Really, you do. You have nerves in your fingers. You have nerves in your toes. There are nerves all over your body. But there are two parts of your body that are especially important for your nervous system. One is the spinal cord. The other is the brain. your brain, spinal cord, and nerves. I told you a little about the spinal cord earlier when we were looking at the skeletal system. I told you that the bones that make up your spine, the vertebrae, are there to protect your spinal cord. The vertebrae are hollow and long strings of nerves run through the hollow parts of the bone. The nerves that make up the spinal cord run all the way up your back and neck. They end up in the brain. If I were to have a serious accident and damage my spinal cord, I might end up paralyzed, unable to move my legs and or arms. I might need to use a wheelchair to get around, like the boy in this photograph. You see, the brain uses the spinal cord as a sort of superhighway to send messages out to the rest of the body. If the spinal cord is broken or damaged, the messages can't get through to the arms and legs. These children have experienced change to their spinal cord, which impacts how they move. The spinal cord leads right to the center of your nervous system, your brain. It's the brain that receives messages from the nerves. It's the brain that sends messages out to your muscles. Even though the brain weighs only two to three pounds, it is the most important organ for life. The brain is protected by the skull, Inside the skull, there are three layers of fiber and fluid protecting the brain. So the brain is really well protected, but it can still be harmed. Ask a football player who's had a concussion. Getting a concussion is like bruising the brain. Ouch! This is an image of the human brain. This image here is the three main parts of the brain. The brain is divided into three main parts, the medulla, the cerebellum, and the cerebrum. Each part has its own job to do. The medulla, or brain stem, is located at the base of the skull, in the back, right where the spinal cord meets the brain. The medulla controls the important involuntary actions of the body, like breathing, heartbeat, and digestion. The cerebellum sits right next to the medulla. It is divided into two hemispheres, or halves. The cerebellum has several jobs. One of them is to control voluntary movements. That means the cerebellum helps you walk, run, and jump. The two hemispheres of the cerebellum control different parts of the body. The right hemisphere controls movements on the left side of the body. The left hemisphere controls movement on the right side. It might seem strange that the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body, but that's just the way we're made. This is an image of the cerebrum, the medulla, and the cerebellum. This 
This is the cerebrum of the brain, the right and left hemisphere. The third part of the brain, the cerebrum, sits on top of the cerebellum and the medulla. It is the largest part of the brain. Each part of the cerebrum has a certain job to do. For example, the front part just inside your forehead controls emotions. The very back part just above the brainstem controls the sense of sight. The sense of touch is controlled by a strip of the brain running over the top of your head from ear to ear. The outside part of the cerebrum is called the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is the wrinkly part of the brain that most people think about when they think of a brain. People sometimes call this part of the brain the gray matter. The cerebrum is divided into two hemispheres, just like the cerebellum. Until recently, we did not know much about the various parts of the cerebrum do. But in the past few decades, we have learned a lot. Scientists now have even more advanced ways than just x-rays to look at and observe different organs in the body, including the brain. They use something called a PET scan to see different parts of the brain work. A scientist may ask the person having the PET or PET scan to do something like talk or blink his eyes or her eyes. When the person performs different actions, different parts of the brain light up on the computer screen. Scientists have learned a lot about what happens where in the brain by looking at PET scans. As you can see from this image of the brain, some of the things we do take place in the left hemisphere while others happen in the right hemisphere. So we have the left brain functions, our analytic thought, logic, language, reasoning, science and math, writing, number skill, and right hand control. The right brain functions, art awareness, creativity, imagination, intuition, insight, holistic thought, music awareness, 3D forms, and left hand control. You may now move on to Unit 3, Lesson 9, Google Forms.